Hi, today's good person to know is Mark Ormrod. He's an ex-Royal Marine who gave an inspirational talk about how to overcome adversity by setting yourself goals. Mark's life completely changed on Christmas Eve in 2008 when I hate to say it but he was blown up and in order to stay alive three of his four limbs had to be amputated. Mark spoke about the day in question and his long road to recovery. Now this talk is really really sad but Mark is so inspirational and for anyone out there who's going through hardship or despair or you know someone who's going down please listen to Mark. Mark set a clear goal for himself and in doing so he realized his own strength and what he needed to do in order to lead an independent life. He pushed himself so hard and continues to break down barriers that come his way. Mark's key advice to anyone is to ignore the naysayers, always look for the positive in a bad situation and never to limit yourself of what you're capable of achieving. Christmas Eve 2007, uh, we were out in Afghanistan working in the southern region of the Helmand province. This particular patrol we were going to go on was due to be the last one that we did for maybe three or four days so we could take some time to relax and do our best to enjoy the Christmas period. Our section got tasked with giving what we call overwatch, which is when we'll all get into fire positions and we'll be primed, ready to move, so that if we're attacked or the other section are attacked, we can strike back instantly. Picked my position, did some final checks, asked the guys if they were happy, they gave me the thumbs up. I was happy, and so I slowly started walking over towards the position that I selected for myself. Now as I got there, I went to get down onto my belly uh, to take up my fire position and as my knee hit the ground, that was when I knelt on and detonated an improvised explosive device. That next hour, maybe hour and a half of my life, involved me having to pick up my own foot, which was still in my boot, attached to my leg, cradle it on my stomach while I was taken off on a stretcher. It involved me falling out the back of the vehicle that was evacuating me and being held half in, half out by my protruding femur bone. And then it involved me being declared clinically dead on the back of a helicopter, only to be revived a couple of minutes later using a very dangerous technique which had only been cleared to use three days previously and had never been tested on a human casualty in the field before. They got me on a plane, they flew me 45 minutes back to Camp Bastion where I went to the emergency field hospital and the surgeons that were on call did an assessment of the damage to my limbs and they made the decision that in order to save my life they were going to have to amputate both my legs above the knee and my right arm above the elbow. I arrived back in Selyuk Hospital in Birmingham around about 4 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day so it was a very, very quick transition. After a week on intensive care they sent me upstairs to the burns and plastics ward which was where I was to start my long road to recovery and effectively start rebuilding my entire life from the ground up. I did my best to be as positive as I could and I tried to focus on the things that I would be able to do rather than dwell too much on the things that I couldn't. Now about three and a half weeks into my recovery I get a knock on my hospital room door. He opened the door, came walking in my room and introduced himself to me as the country's leading medical professional in the field of amputations. And he came in my room and walked up to me and said, Mark, you need to start mentally preparing yourself for the rest of your life in a wheelchair. 24 years old, three and a half weeks into my recovery, trying to be positive, and then the country's expert tells me that I'm gonna spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair. That's the only time in my entire life when I've ever contemplated suicide. I went inside myself into a very dark and very lonely place. About four days later, I get another knock on the door. He opens the door and came walking in my room wearing a set of prosthetic legs. Now this guy came in, introduced himself, his name was Mick Brennan, and he started to tell me his story. You know, he talked me through that entire journey. He took his limbs off, he put them on, he talked me through the whole fitting process. He told me some of his highs, some of his lows, and he told me what I could realistically expect to achieve as a guy missing both his legs above the knee. He also made it perfectly clear to me that because I was missing my dominant arm, that it was going to be a little tougher. Now, when Mick left, he had given me hope, and that hope 
very quickly turned into determination. So in order for me to keep focused and on track and to be able to measure my progress, all along the way I had to set myself a series of smaller goals just to keep my motivation up and to keep me focused. I knew that the guys I deployed with still had about four or five weeks left of their six month tour. I knew that when they came home, they'd go on roughly nine or 10 weeks, what we call post-operational tour leave, which is when they get to go home and spend some time with their families. And then once that leaves over, everyone comes back to the unit and we start preparing for the ceremonial side of things where we have a big medals parade. And so I set myself a goal that when that day came around, rather than be pushed onto the parade square in a wheelchair, I was going to stand up at the sidelines, walk onto the parade ground, stand next to these guys that I fought with and receive that medal in the only way in my mind which I thought was acceptable. There was sweat, there was tears, there was a lot of foul language. I had a lot of temper tantrums. I had good days, bad days, highs and lows. But what I found was because I'd set a goal, it helped keep me focused. I also had an incredible support system in place uh, with doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, friends, families, the Royal Marines, all the other injured men and women that were going through a similar journey to me around me, always encouraging me and motivating me and pushing me on and helping me when things got bad to pull myself out of that and to keep pushing forward. With the help of a stick, I was able to do what I set out to do. So I stood up at the sidelines, walked onto the parade ground, stood shoulder to shoulder with those guys and received that medal in the way that I'd envisioned. I felt extremely proud of myself and what I'd done. I started reflecting on the entire journey and, and trying to pull out the learnings and the teachings and you know, see how far I'd come and how I'd grown. And I decided that that was how I needed to live my life. I needed to take every area that was important to me, start setting goals in those areas, developing some plans, and then taking action and going out and achieving it. And in the beginning, it was great because my recovery just accelerated. My life was moving in the direction I wanted it to. I was motivated. I was focused. I, I was going. And then after a little while, I started to feel a bit flat. You know, although I was happy with my progress and where I was going, I kind of knew in the back of my mind that there was another level that I could hit. The reason I wasn't that happy was because what once to me was, you know, a far off goal in the future and really difficult was now my comfort zone. And so in order for me to grow further and to push myself on, again, I had to step outside of that comfort zone and push myself a little bit further. Uh, in order for me to move forward in my life, I had to stop treating this like a hobby and a part-time thing and start looking at this as a full-time thing. I came across a young man in California named Cameron Clapp. When Cameron was 15, him and his friends had set up a memorial site for the victims of 9-11. Him and his friends were at the site in 2002. You know, rightly or wrongly, they had been partying and drinking. On the way home, Cameron was obviously so drunk that when he crossed the train tracks, he didn't see the freight train coming towards him. He was hit with a train, had both his legs sliced off above the knee, and his right arm, the same as me, up above the elbow. And what blew my mind was this guy wasn't just up walking using prosthetics. This guy was really living. This guy was doing everything that I was being told I couldn't do and that I really wanted to aspire to do. I used his videos and his blogs and, and everything that he was posting online as inspiration to try and take my life to another level. I really wanted to be as close to his level of independence as he was, and then I had to go out and meet him. He was a bit of a rock star to me. You know, he was going out doing all this stuff. He was very busy traveling. He was giving young children inspirational talks about not making the mistakes that he made. You know, someone that I really looked up to and I didn't think he'd have the time to get back to me. He struck up an online friendship and then he started giving me advice and tips and hints about how to improve my independence. He also introduced me to his team. Um, he has a guy that builds his arm, shows him how to use it. Guys that build the legs, program the legs, align the legs, train them how to use them. He introduced me to all these people, and then suddenly I had this network that were communicating with me, giving me all this advice and all these tips about how to improve my independence. And so my rehab just accelerated exponentially. One of the guys in the team uh, called Randy, who is the computer programmer, the guy that programs the legs and how they work, sent me an email saying, you know, we're happy to help you, Mark. We're glad you're doing so well now. Why don't you come to America? come meet Cameron, spend three weeks training with him, go through like a boot camp, and then we'll see if we can't get you to somewhere near the same level of independence that he's at. Flew out to America um, to go and meet this guy that inspired me, to go and learn from him, 
gain all the knowledge I could and hopefully take my life again to another level. And so with the peer support network, the training and the extra education, these guys empowered me to go on and do things which I never thought I'd do again and what other people told me wasn't possible. And these guys opened my mind um, to really what was possible with the right tools, the right mentoring and the right kind of attitude. So I started pushing myself further physically, you know, trying to see really where my breaking point was. 2010, me and, me and a group of friends ran across America, uh, 3,563 miles from New York to LA. It takes me six to seven hundred percent more energy than an able-bodied person to run because I don't have any knees or any ankles and that is by far the most physically demanding thing that I've ever done to date. Two years later we did something similar, uh, but this time in the UK on hand bikes. My advice just before I finish, ignore the naysayers, always look for the positive in a bad situation and never limit yourself to what you're capable of achieving. I know it's just one of those videos that you just do not want to watch because it's so sad, but so equally powerful and inspirational. I didn't appreciate the value of goal setting until I heard Mark's talk, because it really can be the difference between getting yourself up and out and ready to go or just giving up. So I, ho I hope you benefit from this video. I certainly did. Please subscribe to see more and thank you for watching.